let's do a quick derivation of the dealing with spring. So I have a spring here, this actual real spring. And one of the things about springs, the way we model springs, is that I can say that if I have a single spring like this, and I stretch it a distance s, that's an s, then there will be a force pulling back, and the magnitude of that force is k times s. And this is the spring constant. you got to spell it right. Spring constant. And this is the stretch, or the displacement, or whatever. And there's a lot of ways you can write this. Notice that I do not have a negative sign here, because this is a scalar equation. This is the, um, this is the magnitude. And I'm, that's fine for now. If you want to make a better, more elegant equation, then you would need to have some vector stuff in there. But we don't have to do that. Now the question is, what would happen if I use two springs, two different springs with different spring constants? So here I have a spring, and it, it's fairly weak, has a very low spring constant. Here I have another spring, and it's stiffer, and has a higher spring constant. So if I want to connect these two together, I could do like this, and I'll, mad, I'll pretend like they have the same length. Okay, so I'll just pull it right there. And I could stretch it like this. This would be in parallel, right? They're both working the same side, or I could do it like this in series. And so both of those I want to replace. I want to have two in series like this and replace it with one single spring constant. Well, what's the effective spring constant here? And if I do it in parallel, what's the effective spring constant? So let's do the easy one first, and that's the parallel. So let's look at two springs, different spring constants in parallel. So imagine that I have two springs, and they're in parallel. So this is spring k with the spring constant k1, and that's the spring constant k2. And then I stretch these a distance s. And when I do that, there's a force pulling back, f. And I want to find the uh, effective spring constant that I can replace this with a single spring k equivalent such that I stretch at the same distance I get the same force. Well, this one's actually pretty easy because if I stretch this spring a distance s, it's going to push with the force f1. And if I stretch this a distance f, it's going to push with the force f2 so that f is equal to f1. No, plus f2, right? They're just, they both the springs push in the same direction so I can just add their forces together. Now I can write these in terms of k and s. So this would be equal to f. f1 is going to be k1 times s. It's stretch the distance s. And then f2 is going to be k. I'm thinking ahead. You know, that's my problem. f equals k1s plus k2s. And then I can just factor out the s. And I get k1 plus k2 times s. And that's going to be my force. And there you can see that the equivalent spring constant would be k1 plus k2. All right, because then I'd get back into the form f equals ks. Yay. So that, that was pretty easy. Now let's consider what happens if I put them in series, series springs. Oh, also you'll notice that one of the questions that's more common, if I just have two equal springs, if these k1 and k2 are equal, then the, the effective spring constant is twice the, the, the single, which we've done that. I've done that in other classes too. But now let's look at this case. So here I have, uh, in series, I have spring k1, and then k1, and then I have spring k2, and I'm going to stretch it a distance s, and then that's going to pull back with some force f. Now, in this case, if these springs have no mass, then, oh, this is k2, sorry, then the force at k1 pulls is the same as k2, right? Because what pulls spring 1? Well, it's spring 2. And what pulls spring 2? It's whatever force you have. So these forces have to be the same. So I can write this force F is equal to k1 times s1, and then F is also equal to k2 times s2. And you'll notice that they do not both stretch the same distance. If this stretches a little bit, this has stretched the, uh, the rest of it. 
So the stretch, the sum of the stretches has to be the same. S1 plus S2 has to be equal to S. Right? If I, if let's say the total stretch is 2 centimeters and this is uh, 1.5 centimeters, then that would be 1 centimeter. They don't have to be the same, okay? but the total has to add up. So let's write, uh, replace this with a single spring. And it's going to stretch a distance S. It's going to have a backwards force F. And this is just K equivalent. So in this case, I can write F is equal to K equivalent times S. And that's what I want to find that K equivalent. Um, and I can go ahead and write S as K equivalent times S1 plus S2. And that's going to be equal to K1 S1, right? Because that's the force F. It still has to be equal to that. So now I have this expression. K equivalent equals, uh, well, I, I, I jumped ahead again. I'm a jumper header. K uh, equivalent S1 plus S2 is equal to K1 S1. And let's solve for K equivalent. K equivalent is going to be K1 S1 over S1 plus S2. Now I want to get rid of, I want to get uh, S1 and S2 in terms of something else, right? So, and really I want to get it all in terms of K, K1 and K2. So up here I can say S1 is equal to F over K1. S2 is equal to F over K2. Now if I put these in here, I get the following. K equivalent is equal to K1. S1 is going to be F over K1. And then down here I have uh, F over K1 plus F over K2. I can divide everything by F. That's pretty clear. And then up here I have 1. So I have 1 over 1 over K1 plus 1 over K2. Now one way I can write this equation is to take the inverse of both sides and you get Really, this is the way that we normally write it. We would write it like 1 over k equivalent is equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. And that's your answer for the equivalent springs in series. And you'll notice that both these formulas look a lot like equivalent resistors, right, in series and parallel, except that series uh, has the, the one that looks like a res resistors in parallel, and parallel looks like resistors. So there you go. And again, you can check this out. If the two springs are equal, then the equivalent spring constant should be half, and you do get that. So I have 1 over k plus 1 over k is 2 over k. Take the inverse of it, and I get k over 2. The end. Okay. Hopefully someone will find this at one point and find it useful. Um, there's actually a Wikipedia page when this I was surprised. Uh, I hadn't thought of it until I, I encounter a situation where I need to use dissimilar springs. But if you do that, Hopefully that you will find this useful and that is the end.